contribute your materials, build your engine, and use your elephant to compete in the construction of the Tower of Babel in Rise of Babel. And today we'll be teaching you how to play Rise of Babel, game designed by Ivan Alexiev and Elijah Mora, and published by Bedouin Games. We are using a prototype copy here of the game, so the rules and components may not be final. And hello everyone, it's Stella. And Tarrant. Let's get to the game. Set during Genesis 11, Rise of Babel tells the story of the building of a tower to heaven by the people of one language, before confusion and multiple languages were created among the peoples of the earth. In the game, players will use a deck building engine, aiming to gain further cards for a stronger deck, upgrades to upgrade their player boards, and ultimately to transport resources to the tower for points. Placement is key and competitive as players work to build up their own tiles in shared towers, earning points for the best groups and placements. The game will play over three rounds of tower building and whoever scores the most points over three rounds will be the winner. To set up, lay out the main board and in this section on the right, stack the wild colored resources and resource specialty tiles. Shuffle and flip the stack of two by two tower tiles and then place one per player into these available slots. Keep the stack nearby for later use as well as the level two and three main tower tiles. The level one main tower is printed on the board. All of the icons you can see will end up being placement bonuses during the game and you can use these punch out tiles to vary these bonuses from game to game, but that's not required for your first plays. Give each player a player board and all of the matching coloured pieces. These tablet pieces are placed onto these spaces of your player board. The tiles which each show two resources are placed onto this next column. The final column is filled with the tiles which match the icons. So this bottom one, it's the quad resource tile. And then it's the two gold, the one with the cards, and the one with the elephant. Some of these are different on each side. Place them on the side showing. And then take all of the single resource tiles, seven each in the four different resources, and shuffle them up in your colored bag. Draw three at random to place on the left column of your player board. These are called your stalls. And place these three pieces on the main board. Your elephant in your camp. And your two influence markers on the score tracks. This column represents your ones and this column represents your tens. Just keep your two spare cart pieces nearby. Among all of the action cards which have this back, Find your 10 starter cards. These will show this icon with your colour in the top right corner. Return any starters for unused player colours to the box. Shuffle your starter deck and place it face down beside your board. From all the remaining cards, separate out the cards labelled Jobs and the cards labelled Teamster. These are the reserve cards and they go in their own face-up piles. Shuffle all of the rest into a deck and deal out a face-up row of five cards called the market. All players now draw a starting hand of five cards from their personal decks. Choose a first player and you're now ready to play. Rise of Babel is played in turns, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table. At its core, Rise of Babel is a deck building game, and to begin each of your turns, you'll have five cards from your personal deck in your hand. You'll begin your turn by playing those five cards face up on the table. During your turn, you'll activate each of these cards for their effects in whichever order you wish. Each card has one or more banners printed on it, and when you activate the card, you may resolve one of its banners. Each card you activate either has its own action printed on it or gives you an amount of gold which you can then spend to take other basic actions. Once you've finished taking all the actions you wish to take, you end your turn. Discard all of the cards from your played area to a personal discard pile on the right of your board 
and then draw back up to five new cards in hand. Should you ever need to draw a card but your draw deck is empty, then shuffle all the cards currently in your discard pile to form a new deck. The main thing you'll be trying to do in the game is to build your coloured resources into either the main or secondary Towers of Babel. Players will be competing hard to do this, as only certain patterns and combinations of resources will score points. There are three rounds in the game, and when all of the towers are filled, the current round will end, intermediate scoring will take place, all of the resources will be cleared off the towers, and the towers will be reset for the next round. Players may also score some immediate points throughout the process of play, and these points are represented by this blue bannered icon. The game will end after three full rounds of play have been completed, and to the points they've gained, players will add any end of game points they've unlocked represented by the orange banner. Then whoever has the highest score will be the winner. So let's first take a look at the types of actions which can help you move resources from your bag to the tower. And note, I'm going to be showing you a mixture of starter and upgraded action cards here. There are a few different pathways to moving your resources. Firstly, you could go by your camp and elephant. This action here allows you to take a resource from your stalls, so take any one of the three resources from your stalls, and place it in your camp. You can have any number of resources in your camp. Always immediately refill empty slots in your stalls with a new resource drawn from your bag. An action like this lets you move your elephant one step. This action comes in multiples. This half here would let you move your elephant two steps. Your elephant starts the game in your camp and must walk a total of three steps to reach the tower. When it takes the step to leave the camp to the first space, you may load it up with one resource in your camp. And when it reaches the tower space, unload its resource onto the towers. You can place the resource anywhere on the main tower or one of the small towers. If you place it on a space matching the resource, then immediately gain one influence point. If you place it onto this icon, then immediately take the action to move a resource from your stalls to your camp. You also gain one point as a placement bonus whenever you place the final resource on any one of the five towers. Once the elephant unloads, it immediately returns to your camp. A second way to get resources to the tower is via your warehouse, which is represented by this icon. With this fast track starter card, for example, you could use the bottom action to move one resource from your stalls to your warehouse, again replenishing the empty space in the stalls, or you could use it to move from the warehouse directly to the tower. Tower placement rules are no different to a delivery made by Elephant. Then other cards give you variations on how to move your resources around. The blocks card lets you move directly from your stalls to the tower. With this effect you could move two resources from your warehouse to the tower. With this one you could draw a tile blindly from your bag and put it straight into the tower. This lets you move two resources from the stalls to your warehouse, as well as a random tile from the bag to the tower, and so on. Next we'll talk about gold. There are several actions which will cost you gold, and there are several card effects which will give you gold. If here, for example, I chose to play all five of these cards for their gold effects, then I would have a total of six gold that I could use to spend on actions. And I could do this in any combination, including splitting the gold from one card across multiple actions. Most of your gold will come from cards, but you can also use a warehouse effect, returning three tiles from your warehouse to your bag to gain an extra gold. Having done that, I would now have a total of seven gold to spend. The main action you'll be taking with gold is purchasing new cards to add to your deck. The cost of each card is shown in its top left corner. If you purchase a Jobs or a Teamster card, simply take it from the top of its deck, 
and if you purchase from the market, take the card and replenish it from the top of the deck. Any new cards you purchase are added to your discard pile, meaning you'll need to reshuffle your discard pile into your deck before you'll be able to draw them into your hand to use them. If you buy a card with this orange banner, that represents points you'll gain at the end of the game, while if you purchase a card with this blue banner below the price, score those points immediately. For any other action you can take with gold, you'll see the action printed somewhere with the gold cost highlighted in red. This one is to refresh the market. You can pay one gold to sweep out the five cards in the market and replace them from the top of the deck. With this action, pay one gold to refresh your stalls. Discard any number of resources from your stalls and then replace them from your bag. The resources you discard will remain there until the end of this round. They'll eventually go back into your bag at intermediate scoring. Any other gold cost actions will appear on your cards. Here for example, had I drawn the bribing card, I would need to have also drawn two gold during that action, and in this case I'd spend that gold to gain two immediate points. Some effects let you manipulate your deck. This icon means to draw another card from your deck into your hand, meaning you can play its effects this round. This icon with the red strike and this icon with the white X have similar meanings. With the red strike, you must trash this card to take the action. The white X allows you to trash any one card which is in your hand or discard pile. If you trash a Jobs or Teamster card, return it to its pile, for any other card, remove it from the game entirely. Either way, it will no longer be circulating through your deck, hand and discard pile. The grey card icon represents the market, so here you could take a card from the market for free, which costs 3 gold or less. This lets you take a card from your own discard pile and put it back into your hand. And here you can refresh your three stall spaces looking through the bag to choose exactly the resources you want. For cards like these, you don't know what you're going to get. Draw a random tile from your bag, resolve the effect corresponding to the resource you drew, and then return that tile. Do note, if you draw a dual resource token from your bag when resolving one of these, choose which of the two effects you'd rather have, rather than doing both. There are two other effects letting you manipulate the tiles on the tower. This effect here lets you place a wild tile straight on the tower. Choose an available wild tile from those shown here and place it according to the normal rules. Be clear, this tile is wild for player colour, not wild for resource. You would only get the placement bonus if the resources matched, but it will count as if it belongs to all players for intermediate scoring. Then this effect lets you remove your own tiles from the tower. Here you would remove the tile, returning it to your bag to gain the reward as shown. As you move your marker up the scoring track, every time you reach a 5 or 10, you'll reach this confusion icon. Take one confusion token from the supply and place it anywhere onto the tower, gaining any placement bonus you cover. That means covering any resource icon always matches, and thus always grants you one point. Thematically, these represent the story of the Tower of Babel, the Lord seeding confusion around the world by the introduction of multiple languages. In the game, this may result in negative points for some players during intermediate scoring. Finally, we have Upgrade. Always taking this form, the upgrade action involves moving a resource from your stalls to your warehouse, and then moving the matching resources tablet one step to the right along your track. This unlocks a whole lot of upgrades on your player board. In the first column, this unlocks one of your dual resource tiles, and you move it directly to your warehouse. These can be moved around on elephants or straight to your tower exactly as would any other resource tile, and gain the placement bonus for matching either of the two resources. This column also unlocks endgame victory points. 
These four spaces give you a cart or specialty upgrade. If you choose the cart upgrade, take the next piece of your elephant cart and attach it to the back of your elephant. It can now carry two and then later three resources at once. If you choose the specialty, then add a specialty tile that you don't already have to your camp. From now on, each time your elephant makes a delivery of one or more of that resource to the tower, you get one extra point. This is only for resources delivered by elephant, not by any other means. These four upgrades all give you a once-off immediate bonus, and these are all actions we've seen before. And the final column, as well as unlocking endgame points, lets you unlock a tile. When you unlock the top one, place this elephant tile into one space of the movement track. When it's on this side and your elephant enters that space, advance a second space and flip the tile over. When it's on this side and you advance into it, gain a free stalls to camp placement and again, flip it over. That means you get the different benefit on alternating laps. This bonus gives you a once-off benefit. You can trash one card and gain any one card from the market. There's no ongoing benefit other than revealing the points. This bonus grants you ongoing gold. Place it next to your player board on the two gold side. On any turn, you can choose to play this two gold exactly as you would for a card that granted you gold and flip the tile over. On a subsequent turn, play it for its one gold and flip it over again. In this way, you're effectively alternating between getting a bonus one or two gold every turn. Finally, when you advance on the bottom track, gain the four resource tile straight to your warehouse. Like the dual resource tiles, you'll be able to move this to the tower using card actions like this. Any further upgrades on a track that's already at its max gives you one immediate point. The progress of the game is tracked by the filling of the towers, and for rounds one and two, the round will end immediately as soon as all of the towers are full. Pause the active player's turn. If there are still resources on the elephant, leave them there for now. Now complete intermediate scoring. Players will score for their own patterns of specific resources, only in their own player colors, and that can include the wild, according to these patterns, which you can find on the back of the rulebook or in the bottom corner of the board. Bricks score for adjacent brick tiles in a vertical line. Wood scores for adjacent wood tiles in a horizontal line. Stone scores for adjacent stone tiles in diagonal lines. And tar scores for orthogonally adjacent pairs, including any which overlap. So, as shown here, this is the only adjacent column of bricks. This column of two will score three points for the green player. There are two adjacent rows of wood. This would score three points for yellow, and this would score three points for blue. With the resource on a dual or multi-resource tile allowed to count towards multiple objectives. These two wood are in a row, but belong to different players, so there is no score. For the stones, this diagonal scores three points for blue. While on the main tower, all players get to use this wild stone tile as if it were their color. Meaning red gets three points for these two, green gets three points for these two, and blue gets seven points for this diagonal of three. Then the tar scores adjacent pairs, so blue gets two points for this pair, red gets two points for this pair, and two points for this pair, a total of four. Finally, any player tile adjacent to one or more confusion tiles loses one point. So green loses two points, blue loses one, and red loses one. Nobody loses points for a while. Throughout all of this, ignore any confusion icons you pass on the scoring track. Now reset for the next round. Return confusion to the supply. Return all player tiles to their players. With all single and dual tiles going to your bag, as well as anything you discarded during the round. 
while putting your quad tile back to your warehouse. Return wilds to the supply, sweep out and replace the small towers, and overlay the main tower piece for the next round. Whoever was taking a turn when the round ended now continues with their turn where they left off. If that player had undelivered resources, that includes delivering them immediately. The end of the third round is likewise triggered when all of the towers are full in level 3. This time, if there are any undelivered resources, just place them at the base of the tower and score one influence. Then continue playing until all players have had the same number of turns, and again, any other deliveries made at this point score one influence. If you do trigger confusion, place that at the base of the tower as well and score another point. Complete tower scoring as usual, and then add any end of game points you've unlocked. This includes one point for each of the dual resources you got out, plus two points if you got them all out, two points for each end of row upgrade you've unlocked, and any points printed on the cards you've added to your deck, hand or discard pile. The player with the highest score wins, and if tied, victory is shared. And that's how to play Rise of Babel. Check out the project page of Rise of Babel. We'll put the link in the description below so you can check it out. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a great day. See you next time. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another video on the Dice Tower. Hey, do you want to know what's going on with Dice Tower? Do you want to know about our events, our cruises, special things that we're going to do live here in the Dice Tower, subscribe to Dice Tower Digest. Go to DiceTowerDigest.com. It's a newsletter that we send out bi-weekly. We won't use your email for anything else. It's just to get you some information about the Dice Tower so you'll be up to date. Thanks for watching.